proposal is just for the enactment of an ordinance. Okay. So they're going to consult with us on the enactment of the ordinance. And I anticipate before the ordinance is enacted that there would be some type of public hearing or meeting held, obviously for which the township can enact it, but to provide for opportunity for anybody that's interested to provide comment on that issue. So if we wanted their services for the DEP public that, hearing, that would be a separate fee? That would be a separate fee and separate engagement. Mm -hmm. And that would be something that, if it ever developed, would be a couple of years down the road, I would imagine. Okay. And I didn't mention, I apologize about this. Um, there was also a uh, firm that was, um, identity was given to us by uh, Attorney Ewall, and uh, that was Environmental Stewards Consulting, Inc. At last meeting, I was having difficulty remembering the uh, acronyms, the uh, full name, so I just wanted to advise that after our meeting, we had a conversation, let me back up, we had a conversation on the day of the meeting with uh, Dr. Peter Defer, who is the head of this organization, very nice man, um, made a very nice conversation with him, went on for a while. I mean, when I say we, it was myself and uh, the other two attorneys from Eckert Siemens, and um, he was, you know, relatively knowledgeable about the issues, but he did not expect the type of involvement that uh, we would have needed. And he said he wanted to get back to me the following day, then we had the meeting that night, and I spoke to him the following day. And he came, you know, he was very frank with me, he was very honest, and said he didn't think that his group could be involved in that um, process because it was, they weren't able to add much to the conversation is the way he kind of stated it. And I asked him if he could just send me a letter and I, I'll make a copy and have it entered into the minutes if that's okay. Uh, September 29, 2016, I can read it. It says, thank you for the opportunity to review and discuss with you and your team the situation in Milford Township concerning a hazardous waste incinerator. The ESC 18 has discussed the technical issues concerning such a facility and considered what technical expertise we can provide after careful analysis. We do not think that ESC S's, uh, I'm sorry, ESC's technical expertise can effectively best serve the needs of Milford Township. The ESC Inc. organization remains committed to providing assistance for communities and should you need our services in any aspect of this effort or others, please do not hesitate to contact or call us. And then uh, thank you and we wish you and Milford Township the best in this project. Signed by Dr. Deferred. So I'll make a copy we can enter that into the record. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Welling? Uh, yes. Um, what process did the township go through to choose Liberty and why did they arrive at that decision? Liberty uh, is known uh, by Eckert Siemens. They've worked with Eckert Siemens in the past on different projects, but also in my independent review, I came across the, their involvement in um, Peters Township where a crematorium ordinance was. Um, proposed and they gave comments for the township on the ordinance um, and I read their opinion was very knowledgeable and seemed to understand significantly what was going on. I also had a conversation with Gavin. He seemed extremely knowledgeable in what he was saying and they came recommended by the law firm. So with a combination of all of those things and then after speaking with Environmental Stewards Consulting, we weren't sure you know, which way we would go. They dropped out, and the move process uh, uh, had to be, I recommended to the board that we should proceed at this point. Good job. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jim White at W-E-I-C-H, I think. Why, I'm sorry, why? -E. I Did see. You Jim, yeah. Yeah, Did you just think you were signing? He just thought he was signing. Okay, thanks. Uh, Super uh, Yes. What exactly is Liberty being hired to do? What are you asking them for specifically? Sure. To Let me read off. It's a, it's a lengthy letter with a lot of different things in the back, but I'll just read off what their uh, scope of work will be. Uh, Liberty will review state and federal air pollution regulations that apply to waste incineration operations to, ident to identify the most stringent air emissions limitations, pollution control requirements, and pollution monitoring provisions for each air pollutant. 
Liberty will also review air quality permits issued by PADEP and other state air regulatory agency for waste incinerators in order to identify the most stringent pollution control requirements. Liberty will review the following federal air quality regulations. Large municipal waste combustor rule, and there's a bunch of citations which I won't say. Hospital medical infectious waste incinerator rule, the small municipal waste combustor rule, uh, commercial industrial solid waste incinerator rules, other solid waste incinerator rules, hazardous waste combustor, NESHAP rules. And so they're going to uh, summarize the results of the air quality regulatory review in, in tabular format, comparing emission limits and pollution control requirements on a pollutant by pollutant basis. Based on this review, Liberty will identify the most stringent emissions, limits, and, requirement, and requirements for inclusion in an ordinance. Liberty will review state and federal guidelines for human health risk assessment associated with air pollution uh, sources. In particular, Liberty will review the U.S. EPA inhalation risk assessment process required in Section 112F of the Clean Air Act to evaluate residual risks associated with hazardous air pollutant sources. Based on this review, Liberty will draft a human health risk assessment requirement for inclusion in ordinance that will require that cancer and non-cancer health impacts are evaluated, evaluated and maintained below very stringent levels, e.g., for example, less than 1 in 1 million cancer risk over a 70-year life. The applicant would be required to conduct air dispersion modeling to evaluate, evaluate air pollution impacts from the proposed incinerator exhaust stacks, at neighboring properties to ensure health impacts are below acceptable levels. The requirement conducted in a risk assessment will ensure that the design of the proposal. Proposed incinerator includes tall exhaust stacks and sufficient buffer distances to protect neighboring properties. Uh, and then they just want to say they're going to assist in drafting the ordinance accordingly. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk about like nanoparticles and things like that. Mm -hmm. Those are, are they not currently being regulated by the DEP and the EAP? And is that something that, that we're looking into to go a little bit above and beyond what's currently out there? Because as a municipality, you do have the right to go above and beyond what the laws are currently out there, correct? Well, I, I believe that the um, there's a difference of opinion as to what the uh, Township has the legal right to do. I think that DEP's letter that I believe everybody is aware of now that commented about the proposed uh, ordinance that was submitted to the township didn't meet their uh, didn't meet legal analysis that right. DEP. So as a result of that, you know we are looking into ways of still being um, a factor in setting limits that may be greater than those that are uh, currently required under the federal and state regulations. Whether I can talk to you in detail about nanoparticles, yeah. I would be way beyond my expertise and understanding, so that's where Liberty will comment on that, hopefully. Right. My only concern was that the ordinance that we write is above and beyond what DEP currently is requiring to protect ourselves. I think that the township uh, understands the concern of its of the uh, of the population here. Yeah, I mean that's you know if it was the equivalent of what DEP requires, I'm not so sure we would be <coughs> into right. the mix. Uh, Shane Decker. Yeah. Um, first off, I I know a couple of the uh, supervisors here have been at some of the commissioner meetings. And uh, I just want to say thanks because uh, it just shows that you do find this to be extremely important as everyone in this room does. So thank you for that. Um, I did have a question about the letter from DEP. If maybe you could just clarify that, put it in the latest term that they were spelling out. What I took from it was that they were more or less stating that we were kind of held back to follow their regulations and agreed with it correctly. Or um, the way that uh, we've interpreted the letter and from my conversation with Mr. Attorney Robbins thereafter is that DEP uh, sees the framework of their uh, administration of this act to be basically in their wheelhouse only 
they will they, they take care of all of that processes the letter was directed more at the way the ordinance was drafted as it was submitted to the township and they found substantial deficiencies with that ordinance um, I have been frank that I didn't agree with a lot of what was in that ordinance. I stated that in public meetings. There were certain things that I felt myself, not even being at a level of expertise that some of these other attorneys and experts are at, didn't have some of the things that were necessary. There were issues with it. So DEP's decision to write that letter, you know, sets forth what their view is of that ordinance. I can say that with the efforts that we've undertaken, uh, so far and are continuing to undertake, you know, we're not going to explore that ordinance any further. My recommendation to the board, that we're not going to explore that. Um, DEP clearly believes it's in its position to administer these programs and we, um, you know, we're not going to take issue yet with any of that. Our efforts are clearly going to be focused in on looking at what section 4012A of the statute allows the township to do in terms of setting emission limits. So our focus at this point is at that at that level, and then you know we're we're going to look and see what uh, can be done at the uh, within the ordinance after setting those levels. Okay. And the other thing I did want to ask too is um, when Dr. Khan came to the high school, he did mention that part of the regulations that are currently being done are more or less a joke when it comes to testing what the emissions are on these facilities. Um, his recommendation was to follow a, a um, emissions test done currently in Germany. Is that something that we're considering putting into the ordinance? Well, I surely haven't spoken in particular about any international or other nation law. I mean, clearly we are dealing with, at this point, a federal and state law that we have to work with them. Whether those limits are acceptable is something that we can discuss with Liberty to figure out whether or not there could be something like that. There might be opportunities for individuals to come at public meetings and speak at, at the time that the ordinance is considered and maybe that doctor can provide us with that information at that time or beforehand. People are welcome to submit their, you know, their uh, technical data if they want to. That's perfectly fine, um, and we can always forward that on to Liberty. I would probably have to be a little judicious in terms of, of the amount of information we get and how we're going to filter that so that we don't blow through our budget. <coughs> so anything at this point could be analyzed. It's just that it's not as simple as saying, "Thou shalt not meet." or go over this level. That's not necessarily how the process works. It's a combination of a lot of different factors, including, as, you, as uh, Liberty has indicated, modeling and so forth. That's just not a question of a certain a limit. It's a combination of things. So yes, there's a lot of discussion that's going to have to occur from this point forward. It's not off the table. I just don't know if it's in play at this point. Uh, Jerry Decker? Is that it? Any okay. That's all good. Sign up. Can I ask a question? Does the member request? Uh, you mentioned blowing out the budget. Um, what do you have budgeted for this whole process and how much have you been spending? Any idea? Well, the budget that I was referring to was the $5,000 estimated cap that they've placed on this. If I receive you know, hundreds of pieces of information on technical data, I might not have to be, or not, you know, look at that completely and forward it on to Liberty for their analysis. So, how much have any idea how much you spent so far in this whole process of legal expenses and what? I don't want to give you a number off the top of my head and, and tell you wrong, but if you look, you've been at some of the other meetings, correct? On the last page of the minutes is a treasurer's report. There is an individual spot for legal fees, so it's always there each month. Thank you.
What's your name, ma'am? Susan LaFay. I was just wondering how long Liberty has been around, and what's their su success or track record in keeping incinerators out of communities? Um, there is no track record that I'm aware of keeping anything out of communities. The obligation is to, that Liberty is engaging in, is to help and consult with townships, and they've done it with other townships or municipalities, uh, to assist with crafting ordinances and or commenting at uh, the uh, permitting stage um, uh, as to whatever DEP might be permitting at that time. So there's a track record that they've already been hired by municipalities to assist with that, those type of um, uh, ventures. Um, I don't know how long they've been around, but it's, it's been years since uh, the um, Peters Township, Holtmont ordinances, and I believe they are commenting on that. So there seems to be a pretty significant track record, and they've worked with uh, our other law firm on multiple occasions. So they've been successful? Well, that's a loaded statement. It's not that... Uh, the, the township, I've uh, repeated this a hundred times, I think, the township is not here to rally or to exclude legitimate business opportunities or le legitimate business ventures. The act is allows the township to set certain limits that might be more stringent than what is required at the state and federal level. But that's the way the courts will interpret it. And um, the township is considering that. That doesn't mean the incinerator won't come. That's not for the township to make that determination. It means if, if anybody wants to put an incinerator in or any other type of facility that may be uh, impacted by the Clean Air Act and the Pennsylvania equivalent, then they have the right to build as long as they follow the regulations. And all the township is doing is through its police powers act, uh, police powers that they have, they're acting in a way that they seem, you know, to protect the welfare and health of the township residents. But that doesn't mean that this thing won't be built. It just means that the township is taking a role in regulating where they can. Where they can build it, or how, what kind of emissions they can have. To... This particular. Uh, issue is as to setting certain limits for emissions. This is what we're doing right now. The, um, you, you talked about making um, maybe stricter regulations that exceed DEP, go beyond that. DEP only has to enforce their own regulations, so on the flip side, the township will have to hire somebody to enforce our air quality ordinance. Is that how that would work? Because DEP has no obligation to enforce our air quality ordinance. That may be DEP's interpretation. Right. That may be their interpretation of it. I don't know if any court has stated that otherwise. I, I think this is somewhat uncharted territory. And that's what it, I, and it is clear. I don't think DEP is going to be hesitant to say that whether we enact this ordinance or not, they may or may not take those limits. I don't know. And that's one of the things we have to understand as a township. Right. I, we are putting in because of what the law says. We, what we, our interpretation of the law says that we cannot uh, impose limitations that are less strict, so therefore, more strict may be the interpretation. And that's clearly what we are looking at right now, but um, whether DEP takes those limits and applies them to their permitting process, I'm not DEP, so I don't know. So this is not a for sure or for not sure situation, it's something that's developing. Township resident? Yes. Okay, no. Um, I was curious, like, um, as far as our ordinance, where is it, like, how far along is it? And does Hiring Liberty put us back, or does it, uh, in other words, what is the timeline, you think, for completion? 
Well, as soon as I'm going to answer the question, although they're telling me you're not a township president, I'll just answer. Okay. Um, I'll answer the question because uh, this is the this is a step in the process of getting the ordinance drafted. Uh, it, again, we were presented with a ordinance that DEP has basically rendered in, uh, incapable of working. Uh, we spent a significant amount of time and energy trying to analyze and understanding how that ordinance works. We clearly have problems with it. And so therefore, that's the issue that has set, behind, set us behind, if anything. We've removed ourselves from any further analysis of that ordinance, and we're moving on with crafting our own ordinance. So we're starting from the, uh, step one? Uh, we are starting from um, a place that we feel more comfortable in starting from at this point, because unfortunately, the other ordinance did not work out in any way, shape, or form. So we've got to, um, I don't know if it was ever really one that could have survived legal scrutiny. You know, and so we're going to take on some a different aspect at this point. Second. 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 Second.